Hey TV fans, let's dive into a beloved classic that's left a lasting impression on audiences a show set in rural Virginia during tough times. It's all about family values, no fancy stuff, just heartfelt moments around the kitchen table. Now let's spice things up a bit. Get ready for some surprising funny and even sad facts about this timeless TV series. But before we go there, think back to any show or movie moment that really stuck with you. Well, this series is full of those. Maybe it's a touching scene or a heartfelt conversation. Can you recall one? This show isn't just entertainment, it's like a guiding light for some. Ever faced a tough decision and wondered, what would the family patriarch do? Share your stories of how this series has influenced your life. Now, let's reminisce. What's your fondest memory tied to this classic TV gym? Share your stories in the comments below. So, whether it's a laugh, a surprise, or a tear, this show has it all. Stay tuned to uncover more about this timeless family saga. And don't forget to share your thoughts and stories below. In the realm of classic television, there exists a series that captures the essence of family life in a way that few others have managed. It portrays the struggles and triumphs of ordinary people during challenging times, resonating deeply with audiences even beyond its era. This beloved show stands as a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring values of love and solidarity. Throughout its episodes, viewers are transported to the heart of the Great Depression, where they meet a cast of characters who feel like neighbors rather than actors on a screen. The setting is humble, the costumes simple, and the characters refreshingly relatable. Instead of glamorous stars, we encounter ordinary folks navigating the trials of everyday life. At the center of this narrative is a young man, an aspiring writer whose dreams mirror those of the show's creator. His journey, along with that of his family and community, unfolds against the backdrop of a time marked by hardship and resilience. Together, they face the challenges of their era with courage and determination embodying the spirit of perseverance. The themes explored in this series are timeless, touching on the universal experiences of love, loss, and the pursuit of one's dreams. It's not just a show, it's a window into a bygone era, offering insights and reflections that continue to resonate with audiences today. In a world often consumed by glitz and glamour, this series stands out for its authenticity and depth, reminding us of the power of storytelling to capture the essence of the human experience. In conclusion, this remarkable series remains a cherished gem in the annals of television history, a testament to the enduring appeal of stories that speak to the heart. Its impact transcends generations, offering a timeless reminder of the values that bind us together as families and communities. Ralph Waite's portrayal of a beloved father figure in a classic television series has left a lasting impression on audiences. The character he brought to life resonated with viewers, becoming a memorable part of TV history. His performance received praise, and it continues to be celebrated today. The roots of this family drama can be traced back to the creative mind of Earl Hamner Jr., the writer behind both the series and the novel that inspired it. From the pages of this book emerged a story that captured the essence of family ties and the struggles of a past era. The actor's embodiment of the father character elevated him to legendary status, earning recognition as one of TV's greatest dads. His portrayal was so impactful that it earned a high ranking on a notable list of iconic TV fathers. The enduring popularity of the show and its characters speaks to the creative genius behind it and the talented cast. Looking back, this TV series remains a beloved part of television history, with the actor's portrayal standing as a testament to the power of storytelling. Its influence continues to resonate with viewers who appreciate its depiction of family values and the resilience of its characters. In conclusion, Ralph Waite's role in this beloved series is more than just acting. It's a cultural landmark in television history. The character's significance is a result of the creative brilliance behind the show and the enduring appeal of its storyline. John, the central figure in the 1972 TV series, had an older brother named Ben who met his end in World War I. In a poignant tribute, John named his third son after the fallen sibling. Ike Godsey, a character in the series, wrote a 1927 Harley Davidson Model J for his on-screen adventures. The vintage motorcycle added a touch of authenticity to the show's portrayal of the time period. Bulgiri, another notable figure associated with the series, faced Hollywood blacklisting in 1951 due to his outspoken liberal politics. Undeterred, he established the Wilgier Theatrical Botanicum during this challenging period, providing a haven for himself and his blacklisted colleagues where they could continue their passion for acting. The Waltons, through its characters and their connections, weaves a narrative that goes beyond the family's daily life, delving into historical events and personal tribulations. 
In the late 1990s, in a quiet town in Ohio, actor John Ritter got married to his longtime partner, Amy Yazbek. Their wedding was a big moment for them, showing how much they loved each other. At the same time, Ralph Waite became really popular with audiences by being in every episode of a well-loved family TV show. This was rare in the TV business, but his hard work paid off, and people loved his character. Before becoming famous on this show, actor Wilgier had to decide whether to take a role in another production. But things worked out differently, and he ended up on the show that made him famous. It shows that sometimes good things happen unexpectedly in Hollywood. Looking back, these stories give us a peek into Hollywood's history where love, hard work, and lucky breaks come together to create the stories we love to watch. And for these actors, their work on TV is still remembered and appreciated, showing how special television can be. Throughout its run, numerous notable actors graced the screen, including Sissy Spacek, Bruce Davison, Catherine Burns, Jennifer Jason Leigh, Ned Beatty, Beulah Bondi, Ron Howard, Kathleen Quinlan, Lynn Carlin, and Dean Jagger. In an episode, Grandpa reveals his middle name is Tyler. Additionally, in the series premiere, following their initial movie, the family gathers around a new radio to tune into the Edgar Burgeon and Charlie McCarthy show, a homage to Burgeon, who portrayed the original Grandpa in the pilot film. In its unfolding, the series brought together a cast with rich theatrical backgrounds. Notably, Will Gere, a member of Orson Welles, and John Houseman's Project 891 Theatre Company, sponsored by the Federal Theatre Project, played a significant role. His presence added a layer of seasoned artistry to the unfolding narrative. Within the familial tapestry of the show, Grandpa's character bore the name Zebulon, a moniker echoed several times throughout its run. In contrast, Grandma's character was identified as Esther, her name becoming a steady presence in the familial dynamics. Ralph Waite, another pivotal figure in the series, played a foundational role both on and off screen. Beyond his on-screen persona, Waite was the founder of the Los Angeles Actors Theater, a venture he largely financed himself. This dual role as actor and theater founder showcased his commitment to the craft beyond the confines of the Waltons. The series, born out of an ensemble of seasoned performers, unfolded against the backdrop of the characters' lives and the broader artistic journeys of its cast. These behind-the-scenes glimpses into the theatrical roots of the cast members added depth to the familial narrative crafted on screen. Decades ago, two actors starred together in a popular TV series. They later appeared in several other shows, showing they still worked well together. The school on the show looked like it was in a small town with fake dirt to make it seem rural. The main family's house was in Burbank and was quite famous. Even though the original set isn't around anymore, it's still remembered in other shows. Its connection to the Gilmore Girls set adds more to its story. The TV series draws its roots from the film Spencer's Mountain, written by Earl Hamner Jr. and starring Henry Fonda and Maureen O'Hara. Judy Norton, known for her role as Mary Ellen, offers fans a glimpse behind the scenes through her YouTube channel. With videos featuring cast members from the prequel TV movie and answering fan questions, she provides unique insights into the world of the series. John Ritter, known for his role as Reverend Fordwick, is highlighted in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives. After Richard Thomas concluded his tenure in the series, he pursued other acting opportunities. His departure marked the end of an era, as his portrayal of John Boy was central to the show's early success. Robert Whiteman stepped into the role, but notably did not participate in subsequent reunions. Michael Learned, who played Olivia Walton, expressed discomfort with Thomas's replacement. Additionally, Ellen Corby's health scare brought uncertainty to the show's future, with vague updates on her condition until her eventual return over a year later. Despite these challenges, the series persevered, continuing to captivate audiences with its timeless portrayal of family life. Back in the 1970s, when safety standards on sets were lax, filming the Waltons was a risky endeavor. The Sommel scenes were shot in an actual working mill, with actors handling equipment without proper protection. Nowadays, such practices would be unthinkable. Hal Williams, who appeared on the Waltons, later crossed paths with Marla Gibbs on the Jefferson set. Years later, they reunited on 227, with Gibbs playing his wife. Some episodes of The Waltons suffer from poor DVD transfers, leading to issues like overly hot video levels or incorrect color temperature. However, platforms like Amazon Prime offer corrected versions for viewers to enjoy as intended. In the world of TV, few shows have left as lasting an impression as The Waltons. Its actors like Michael Learned and Ellen Corby made a big mark in TV history. Michael Learned, who played Olivia Walton, won four Emmy Awards for her role. 
Alan Corby's return for a special episode is still remembered fondly by fans, but it wasn't just the acting that made the Walton special. The show's setting, including a real garden, added a genuine touch. Bulgir, who played Grandpa Walton, took care of this garden based on his own farming experience. Overall, the Waltons went beyond just being entertaining. It showed real stories and heartfelt performances. It's a reminder of how powerful storytelling can be, leaving a lasting impact on viewers. Drusilla's Pond, a key element of the TV series, served a dual purpose. The exterior set was occasionally drained for versatility, transforming it into a different backdrop for specific episodes, notably in The Lie and The Pursuit. In a distinct turn of events, John Ritter, recognized for his roles, made history as the inaugural guest on The Wayne Brady Show in 22. On a personal note, John Walmsley and Ellen Corby shared a unique bond. Walmsley, lacking knowledge of his own grandparents, and Corby, devoid of grandchildren, adopted each other. Their relationship extended beyond the screen, with shared attendance at events and visits to various places. Such behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dynamic elements that enriched the experience for both the cast and the viewers. Michael Learned, who was stage-trained at San Francisco's ACT company, frequently appeared with her first husband, actor Peter Donat. They married when she was 17. In the closing scene of the series' final episode, the remaining Walton family members and the Gotsies gathered at the Baldwin sisters' mansion for a party. As the sisters thank their guests for coming, the viewer can see that several unnamed guests have joined the crowd. They are creator Earl Hamner Jr. and other long-running cast and crew members, giving the scene a rap party look. Ellen Corby, who was once nominated for an Oscar for her supporting role in I Remember Mama, had really only played small bit parts in motion pictures for 20 years before she became a key part of television's The Waltons. In March of 2000, she was left out of the yearly in memoriam segment of the, the 72nd Annual Academy Awards. The Academy chose instead to memorialize another small bit part actor in films, Henry Jones. In the series, John Walmsley pursued his musical passion with his band, the UK Beat, showcasing 1960s British rock and pop. The depiction of Southern communities in the 1930s accurately reflects segregation. While the family maintains friendly relations with their black neighbors, the church and school on Walton's Mountain remain all white, highlighting the racial dynamics of the era. Ellen Corby faced health challenges, temporarily leaving the show after a stroke. Despite concerns, she returned to filming, with her colleagues affirming her enjoyment of being back on set and the beneficial impact on her recovery. Ellen Corby, known for her role as the strict Baptist grandmother, was an avid practitioner of transcendental meditation. In 1969, she trained under Maharishi Mahesh Yogi to become a teacher of the discipline. Meanwhile, Richard Thomas, then 21 years old, insisted on top billing over more experienced actors Ralph Waite and Michael Learned, and he secured it. Ralph Waite, on the other hand, met his second wife, Carrie Shear Waite, while she volunteered as a stage manager actress at the Los Angeles Actors Theater. Ronnie Claire Edwards, with extensive repertory experience, recently published a memoir titled The Knife Thrower's Assistant, recounting her diverse career. Ralph Waite initially resisted the lead role in the series, but was persuaded by Earl Hamner Jr. to take it. Will Jeer, known for improvising, would sometimes add lib dialogue or insert poetry into his lines. He occasionally sang restricted to public domain songs to avoid music licensing issues. Amidst the rural family saga, some interesting behind-the-scenes tales unfold. One of the actors led a double life during the show's run. While playing a character, he quietly managed three successful real estate agencies. Despite his supporting role, his wealth surpassed that of the main stars and producers. In glimpses behind the curtain, another actor shared anecdotes on her YouTube channel. She recounted encounters with actors from other productions during that era. From other TV shows, the paths of different casts crossed. She even caught sight of a famous actress, but refrained from striking up a conversation. Meanwhile, another actor, who originally portrayed a significant character, returned for occasional guest appearances after his character's transition. His initial commitment spanned the show's first five seasons, but not in a full-time capacity. The show, steeped in family values and rural charm, unveils a parallel narrative where actors navigated their own distinct paths behind the scenes. These untold stories add depth to the series. In 2017, Richard Thomas received a Tony Award nomination for his performance in The Little Foxes. Prior to his success, John Ritter collaborated with Harry Morgan on two films in 1971, The Barefoot Executive and Scandalous John. 
A CBS executive once suggested Henry Fonda for a lead role in the series, but Fonda declined, acknowledging the family ensemble's prominence over individual stardom. It was clear the family, not any single actor, was the heart of the show. In a classic TV series, one actor played a pivotal role as a father figure. He later appeared in two other popular shows, leaving a mark on each. Another well-known actor collaborated with a director on multiple films, though he narrowly missed a role in an acclaimed movie. Interestingly, some cast members initially embraced strong accents for their roles, but gradually let go of them as the series progressed, altering the dynamics of their performances. In the wake of its successful ratings, several rural-based period shows emerged, capitalizing on the popularity of the Waltons. These included The New Land, Apple's Way, Boone, The Manhunter, The Texas Wheelers, and Little House on the Prairie. Notably, John's pickup truck, a 1929 Ford model, ah, posed occasional challenges as it didn't always run. In such cases, crew members resorted to pulling the car in and out of scenes using a rope. The setting of John Boy's College, Boatwright University, draws inspiration from the University of Richmond, particularly in naming the library Boatwright Memorial Library. In the world of 1972 TV series The Waltons, these facts offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes challenges and the real-world inspirations shaping the show's narrative. In a previous collaboration, Ralph Waite and Richard Thomas portrayed father and son in the film last summer. Thomas played Peter, while Waite assumed the role of his father. During the early seasons of the series, Judy Norton and some of the other children went barefoot to depict the financial struggles of the Great Depression. However, this changed when one of the children injured their foot on set, prompting producers to mandate shoes for the kids. Judy Norton, known for her portrayal of Mary Ellen, posed nude in Playboy's August 1985 issue in an attempt to break away from her image associated with the series. In the series, there's some confusion about characters' birth years. Initially, it suggested that one character was born in 1916, but later episodes indicate it was actually 1914. Another character, born in 1927, graduates high school in 1947, yet someone born in 1923 doesn't graduate until 1944. The actress who played Grandma Walton also had roles as Edgar Bergen's wife twice, showing her versatility. Additionally, the former mother-in-law of one actor made a guest appearance on the show. These connections and differences make the series story more interesting. Following John Boy Walton's journey at Boatwright University, which drew inspiration from the University of Richmond, the show underwent a notable change in its eighth season. Richard Thomas departed to pursue a film career, leading to Robert Whiteman stepping into the role. Whiteman's arrival prompted a shift in the credits, with John Boy's character being dropped from the opening sequence. Unlike Thomas, who was prominently listed at the top of the credits, Whiteman was featured in an also starring credit in the closing. Additionally, Hal Williams, who faced controversy after being fired from The Jimmy Stewart Show in 1971 due to racial reasons, also played a role in the series. In the show, Michael Learned was originally billed as Miss Michael Learned to avoid confusion about her gender. Tom Bauer, who portrayed Mary Ellen's husband, Kurt, appeared in a 1975 episode titled The Wing Walker as Airplane Pilot Rex. Ralph Waite directed 16 episodes, with his directorial debut being The Fawn in 1973. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dynamics of the show's production. The nightly goodnight ritual in the Waltons, inspired by creator Earl Hamner, Jr.'s childhood, was a real tradition in his family. Ralph Waite, who played a character seldom seen at church, was actually a licensed minister. He directed 16 episodes, including his debut. In one notable exception to the routine, the family rushes to pay respects to President Roosevelt as his train passes after his death in a two-part episode. Ralph Waite also assisted John Ritter's portrayal of Reverend Fordwick. Judy Norton and her fellow cast members, who played her siblings, formed a close bond with Ray Dames Para from Kung Fu. Both shows were filmed at Warner Brothers Studios, allowing them to hang out during breaks. Judy would visit the set of Kung Fu with Ray Dames to pass the time. The exterior scenes of the show were mostly shot in Burbank on the Warner Brothers ranch backlot, while rural areas were filmed on the jungle set. Additionally, locations like Frazier Park and Franklin Canyon Park were used for authenticity. In The Homecoming A Christmas Story, only the natural redheads retained their hair color for their roles. Others, like Michael Learned, dyed their hair temporarily. Ralph Waite, known for his role as John Walton Sr. on The Waltons, was recognized as one of the top TV dads by TV Guide in 24. He had a personal life, too, with step-grandsons born to his stepson, Liam Waite, and Liam's then fiancé, Natasha Henstrich. 
Will Jeer, another actor from the show, earned a Tony nomination in 1964 for his role in a musical adaptation of the film The Rainmaker. His co-star, Inga Swenson, was also nominated. As the show progressed, it faced some tough times. One of the main actors, Ralph Waite, had to leave because the show couldn't afford to keep him. They thought cutting costs would help the show, but it didn't work out well with the audience. The show kept going for one more season before it ended. Interestingly, the actor Richard Thomas, who played a big part, was actually older than his on-screen dad, Zeb Walton, played by Wilgier. Ralph Waite showed his loyalty to his former co-stars by attending a book signing event for Mary Beth McDonough, which shows how close they were. These backstage details give us a glimpse into what influenced the show's journey. Set in Virginia's Blue Ridge Mountains, the series was primarily filmed on the Warner Brothers studio backlot in Hollywood. Series creator Earl Hamner Jr., who grew up with seven siblings, drew inspiration from his own family for the characters. John Ritter, a cast member, was a fan of the Beatles and even appeared on Ringo Starr's television special in 1978. Hamner based the characters of the Walton's grandparents on composites of his own grandparents. Despite initial doubts from his father, John Ritter landed a regular role on the series, which made Tex Ritter very proud. In season 9, Ralph Waite missed a couple of episodes due to other projects. Despite facing tough competition at first, this show eventually became more popular than others like Flip and Mod Squad. CBS's decision to cancel shows with rural themes caused controversy, but this program's popularity showed it had staying power. In a surprising twist during an episode titled The Hero in 1972, viewers of a popular TV series discovered that Sheriff Ep Bridges had the unexpected real first name of Marmaduke. One notable actor from the show earned recognition for his outstanding performance. In 1990, he received the Drama Log Award for his role in the Lisbon Traviata at a theater in Los Angeles, California. The tombstone of a key character in the series reveals a lifespan of 76 years, living from 1865 to 1941. Interestingly, this matches the age of the actor when he passed away. These snippets provide a glimpse into the details that unfold in the series, adding depth to the characters and storylines.